Hello and welcome to the second installment of Grim Fandango played like you've never seen it played before. In this episode, we will see how an office lobby can predict the future. And more importantly, raise the question of why it would even want to. We also get to see office supplies used for anger management, and we examine the true meaning of friendship. Don't worry, the nightmarish images those words have put in your mind will not come to pass. Instead, it's a comforting story about a skeletal reaper and a demon from the underworld who initiate their bromance in a cold, dank cellar. See? No terrifying rainbows. You're safe. This lobby is just full of artifacts from the future. And a couple of gods. Ah, the old head of the department. Way before my time, I heard he was a total slave that driver. That must be Sholotl. He and his twin, Quetzalcoatl, traveled to the world of the dead to pick up bones to repopulate the world of the living. Shalotl was somewhat of a bad guy and his brother had to kill him at the end. Not that I have a choice, but I wonder if I'd be happier working on a ship. Then again, I'm so competitive, I wouldn't be able to relax until I was captain. It's like he's remembering the future. These things up here are also part of the future. There's the blimp that reminds Manny he has no business in the land of the living. And this pyramid on the elevator is also from the future. It's cute watching him walk in and out of that thing. And that hot rod represents the platonic ideal of the automobile, and it hasn't even been built yet. Let's see, where am I on this? Don Copal, Domino Hurley, Junior Sales Associates. That better not be me. The present right now is not too pleasant. There she is. The number nine. One of these days, I'm gonna ride her right on out of here. But he hasn't given up yet. Good afternoon. He's so polite to Quetzalcoatl. Maybe that's why there's so often somebody there to save him. He completely doesn't realize that he's walking through the endgame pyramid over here. You can kind of see Manny from Ava's point of view here. Could I take your whole punch? Ha! I doubt you could take my half punch. If she smack talks like this at the office, imagine what she would do with the internet. Mind if I use your whole punch? Knock yourself out. Thanks. Gets the aggressions out, doesn't it? So that's what all this paper debris over here is. It's Ava's aggression coming out. Now we know what she uses the hole punch for as a substitute for an online PvP spaceship game, complete with forums that you control people on. What is that horrible squeaking noise you're making? New shoes. Of course his first instinct is to lie. But we can choose to tell her the truth at this time. Where does he keep all this? Is it in his suit? Or is he like Bender, keeping it in his chest cavity? That's what's making that terrible noise. Uh, I forget. Am I supposed to be somewhere right now? Manny, do I have to explain your job to you again? Let's be marginally competent. No, I just want to know where my driver is. Do you want me to have him paged? 
Yes. Then get Don to stop being such a cheapskate and install a paging system. You're just gonna have to troll the carpool until you find a demon with a driver's license. I wonder if trolling demons in hell is more fun than trolling a reaper about his lack of clients. Why do I have to use a demon for a driver? Only demons can operate the cars. If the company let you guys drive, you'd all be AWOL in 10 minutes. Got me there. That sounds like either a kind of slavery or house arrest. Maybe the proper term would be work arrest. What if we just skip town tonight? You and me, baby. Well, thanks for the offer, but we'd never make it out of the city alive. But... In one piece, I mean. I bet I could get you out if I really tried. Oh, Manny, look at you. You're a trapped soul and you don't even know it. He doesn't know he's a trapped soul. Does that mean she knows that she's a trapped soul? And what does that mean? Is a trapped soul somebody that never leaves an area? Or... Does it matter because you're in a time loop anyway and you just repeat the same thing over when and over again? clients qualify for better travel packages? They led good lives. Que tries. How do you define a good life? Even Google couldn't translate that. Because that is some really epic local Mexican street slang. Everyone who can really appreciate Manny Calavera needs to stop for a minute and thank Tony Plana who added things like this to the script and by doing so gave Manny his strong bones that still belong to his people. Some comments I found online say that this means what's your problem or what's up with you. Manny usually takes Ava's sass and even threats of violence with good humor, but the words good life seem to have struck a bone. Better than yours and mine. Domino doesn't need to drive like that to get good clients from Manny. Hearses on a hook. Here's what I need. Wheels. Manny seems to find them quite ordinary. Man, he walks loud. I have quieter stilettos than those shoes. Hey, service! Hey, who the- Oh, sorry, sir. I didn't expect the sales agents usually don't come over to this part of the garage. I'm Calavera. Is he really trying to be James Bond while wearing that suit? My name's Gladys. I don't get many visitors. Hey, I got a message for a Mr. Calavera. Uh, your driver said that Mr. Hurley said that he could have the rest of the day off. Domino sent my driver home? Yeah, wasn't that nice? Gladys. Gladys. Is that a German name? Oh, no. My roots lie not in any earthly nation's soil. I am an elemental spirit summoned up from the land of the dead itself and given one purpose, one skill, one desire. To play the role of Sam in Casablanca. No matter what the future brings as time goes by. To drive! Or to change oil and adjust timing belts if no driving jobs are open. Great, he's a driver, but what Manny really needs is a friend. Nice hut. Yeah, I wonder how nice it would seem to you if you were trapped in it all day like me. There's the trapped word again. Something else the two of them have in common.
If you hate your job, why don't you quit? And it's that's not just a job. Irony. It's what I was created to do. If I get any farther away from cars than this, I'll get sick and die. It's like I'm not happy unless I'm breathing in the thick, black, nauseating fumes. <sighs> hmm. Can't imagine. So Manny just admitted that he's not happy unless right. he's smoking. Back in the shack, Mac. Later and that only. seems really Ronnie. sad. At least it does unless you observe him and then you notice that he's smoking half the time. So he must be happy half the time and that's better than a lot of people can do. Of course, you can't live and hey, smoke Jeannie, as much as he does. Come out of the lantern already. You can't stay alive doing that. Huh? I'm not suggesting that he died from smoking. Hey, you a driver? Me? Ha! No. No, no, no. I don't ride him. Just wrench him. Looks like I need a new driver. Oh! I, uh, I, uh, I would agree with that. Yes, you do. That is epic self-control. You want to be my replacement driver? Me? Oh, oh, no. Sorry. Can't. Rules. Well, do you know anyone who can drive? Everybody's gone. It's the Day of the Dead, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're not too big. The cars are just too small. Yeah, those dang compact cars. Hey, that gives me an idea. I could alter your car just a bit with just a quick torch job to let out the seams, you know? I'll but I'm not allowed to modify the cars without a work order from upstairs. I could lose my job. A work order, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't torch anything bigger than a cigarette without one of these signed by the boss himself. Hey, hey, hey. that's my line. Getting people to sign. Back in a snap. Yeah, too small. I'm not too big. Everything around here is just too small. I've got to get this work order signed. Thanks for watching my videos. I really hope they help you notice something in this game that you've never seen before when you played it. And if you've never played it, I really hope you're able to do that because then the surprises that follow in this video series are going to be even more surprising. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with all your friends, and help me solve the remaining puzzles in this game. Like, what kind of corporate spy do you think Ava is? Is she a really good spy that is pretending that she doesn't know where Kopal is? Or what? I mean, really? And does the image of the bone wagon in the lobby... Uh, is that just regular foreshadowing, or does that indicate that Manny's trapped in a time loop and he can't change it? Well, in the next video, we learn what Manny spends his salary on, since it isn't his wardrobe, and who exactly is trolling the demons in the server room with beer bottles. So join me next time, and um, we're going to find a few more Lotteria cards next time, so if I missed any this time, please let me know in the comments as well. Thank you, and have a great evening.